to call him up. <laughs> How's it going? And it's um, Garub Chakrabarti? Uh, the name is Gorab Chakrabarti. He is close. Close enough. So I, my name is Gorab. Uh, I'm the co-founder of Solugen, and we engineer biocatalysts to upgrade CO2 into high-value chemicals. Our first entry point into the market space is hydrogen peroxide. Solugen hydrogenates CO2 and then uses our unique enzyme to make H2O2 to make safe, on-site, and on-demand, ultra-pure hydrogen peroxide for semiconductor oxidation use and for pesticide industry. The H2O2 industry right now is a $4 billion industry expected to grow to about seven to $10 billion by 2020. Of that, the ultra-pure market is about $400 million. Uh, one of the huge demand or growth drivers of this uh, class of peroxide is pesticides. $12 billion uh, market in the U.S. alone. Uh, but the thing is, H2O2, hydrogen peroxide, is the only EPA-certified uh, organic pesticide. So the demand is starting to skyrocket. But farmers can't pay for it because it's 30 times more expensive than the current uh, pesticides that are cancer-causing, as seen here. The big five players are your household names in chemistry. Maybe not so much, but... Dow, BASF, all of these companies are the, the big guys, and they use a process called the anthraquinone process. Really shitty process, and basically what it does is the product is extremely contaminated. Uh, it's extremely dangerous, this whole process. One hydrogen peroxide plant a year explodes. That's a 100% chance that there's going to be a plant that explodes this year. In fact, in January, there is a plant from Peroxychem that exploded in Houston already. And the issue is, this is not a very green mechanism, and it's extremely far from the customers, so you have to concentrate product down to explosive levels to get it to your customers, who then have to dilute it down on site, which is extremely dangerous as well. This is what we call Goliath. This is the AO process as it currently stands. Every single one of these boxes is a, f is a building. Every single one's a building. So you, c you can imagine how large of real estate you would need to house uh, an AO process. So now I'd like to introduce you to David, uh, the counterpart to Goliath. This is uh, our process called a, the peroxy loop. And basically it's a continuous loop that makes hydrogen peroxide to the same exact concentrations and volumes that are used in the current method, but uses only air and formic acid, or CO2 in this context, as input. And the way we do it is we hydrogenate CO2 to formic acid, and then we use oxygen and our uh, secret sauce or our enzyme to, to make hydrogen peroxide. And so why now? Why is this an important issue? Because right now the EPA is mandating that we switch oxygen usage to hydrogen peroxide. Right now we all know about chlorine bleach or whatever, but it sucks. It's very envi environmentally dangerous, and the EPA is mandated that in 2018 every single peroxide or every single plastics manufacturer switch to hydrogen peroxide. H2O2 is the only EPA certified organic pesticide, and the technology has, is ripe for the taking right now. This is just some fancy crap. Basically, all it shows is like our process is cheaper. Um, so our business model is essentially H2O2 directly to consumers through our established distribution network. We price our product 50% less. Our product is far purer than anything available on the market. And the average account size for our semiconductor customers we found is about $35,000 a year. There are about 200 to 300 customers in the America. So we're, we're trying to get all of them, but right now we've only got a few. So year one is the re way for reclaim in semiconductor co co companies. And our second year, we're going to focus on the pesticides market. Our roadmap is really just building our product with our customers. But we are uh, fortunate enough to get accepted to Y Combinator this June. But we ended up, thank you. Uh, but we ended up deferring uh, Y Combinator to January so we can focus on customer acquisition right now. And by the end of Y Combinator, we're going to raise our Series A through uh, their network. Uh, we have our first customer. Right now, we have a letter of intent through them. It's called Triquint Semiconductors here in the DFW area. And we're pricing our product at $4.50 or $4 a gallon, uh, 1,000 gallons a month. It's a significant customer for two of us, effectively. Um, but this is, gives us a good proof of concept for our technology. So this is a question all these investors have asked us, and, and I think it's a garbage question, but I'll answer it just because we're here. Uh, so basically, the idea is, how much money can you make? And I'm like, I don't know the answer. I could tell you how much money I'll make by the end of next month, but not in five years. 
But if you're interested, we believe that if we can get 10% of the semiconductor market and 2% of the pesticides market, we could probably r rake in around 130 million a year uh, with an EBITDA of 72.5 million. Again, I, I, don't, I can't say that's going to be realistic, but that's how we get to a billion dollar valuation one day. So this is our team. Uh, I'm an MD, PhD trained enzymologist from UT Southwestern. Uh, and I was previously part of a startup called ShapeUp. We just got acquired by uh, Richard Branson's version Pulse Group. Thank you. That was the most technical pitch I've ever seen. And I was, Science. I was impressed. Now look, hey, my, uh, I was trying to like process that. That was amazing. I like Thank that. you. How about some questions? So what do you need help with? Why are you here? I wanted you guys to join my team. In what way specifically? We need marketing efforts. We need, we need people on the floor selling product. Are there any byproducts through your process? And if so, are they toxic? No. <laughs> Were you guys just doing this process as of now? We have a lab here in Dallas right next to uh, Luffield Airport. So basically what we did was we took this warehouse space and retrofitted it with hoods and everything, and it's a full-blown lab space plus warehouse. Is that your most expensive expenditure? It is not. It? So okay, real estate cool. in Dallas is extremely cheap, as it okay. turns out, for the warehouse market at least. So it cool. is not. Thank you. So you said that you're using CO2 enzyme to create H2O2. What happens to the carbon? So what we do with the carbon is recycle it back into our loop. That's why you call it the peroxy loop technology and rehydrogenate it to make formic acid again. So it's a closed system effectively. So which portions of the process are patented? Is it the process itself or the inputs to it? So we, our first big patent was a non-provisional patent application on the actual enzyme technology. Uh, which is again our secret sauce um, but basically we're now are having a utility patent on board where we have the whole process contained within one unit uh, what other semiconductor companies are you talking to right now so ti is our next big one um, i'm happy to announce that basically we've had a partnership through utd where we can start selling products through to ti in their richardson fat it's a huge market for us That is absolutely the best presentation that I've ever seen at a DNT. It's a highly technical concept, and you had the entire audience captured. How worried, and this is the actual question, how okay. worried are you about regulatory changes affected by the current political climate? I, I, they're going to be in our favor. So basically, right now, we stand in a position where, by 2018, the whole entire plastics and propylene oxide industry has to switch to hydrogen peroxide. That gives us a huge boost in our demand and in our process because the current process is not green. So if the EPA is demanding that we have a green oxidant, how can they say that without having a green process? So the, ho the demand will, will come to us because we have the, the greenest process on the market. Hi, so what challenges are you facing with scaling your process to the scale of 10 to 15 to 20 buildings? Uh, billions, is that what you said? Buildings. Oh, oh okay. Uh, the, the scale right now is basically the cost of our enzyme is, is the cap because we're making it ourselves right now. And we can make it at scale, but the issue is going to be when we start getting to megatons of volume, we have to start partnering with third-party companies to make the enzyme for us. Since it's a closed-loop system, um, are you going to build a machine? Yes. Oh, thanks. Uh, no, you're gone. Oh, was it? <laughs> oh, premature gonging. Uh, so, uh, so, so, so the question is, since it's a closed loop system, are you going to build a machine so you can deploy it everywhere globally? Yeah, so, so this is the idea, right? So I think the huge value here is that we can make a distributed network of peroxide plants that currently cannot be done because every single plant is hundreds of miles away from customers because you need so much infrastructure. So what we want to do is say, hey, that's a not so smart model. I realize there's a kid, so I can't use bad language. So we can't use like these huge distributed models. We want to make something that's so ubiquitous that it's like a tap water, basically. Exactly. Uh, and, and one day we will get to that, but right now we're focusing solely on those two customer groups. Say 
So it's actually funny. So my PhD was in cancer biology. I discovered this reaction in pancreatic cancer cells. And I started t talking to my buddy, Sean. He's a, he just finished his PhD at MIT. Turns out he was working on hydrogen peroxide production through like metal catalysts. And one day I was like, yo, I think I found this reaction that makes a lot of peroxide. He's like, shut up. I'm like, why? Because, <laughs> because he's like, oh, because this is exactly what I've been working on for five years on my PhD and you figured it out in a cancer cell. I'm like, yeah, man, let's team up. My, my friend back here would like to know if you have a patent on that secret sauce. Yep. Go ahead, go ahead and ask. Yeah, that keeps me up at night because I think uh, the issue there is these big companies don't play by the rules. So what we'd like to do, I think there's an opportunity for a licensing agreement uh, in which we would get royalties uh, based on the amount of peroxide produced using our technology. Obviously, that doesn't protect us from uh, our product being stolen or our, our process being stolen, but effectively what we would do is, is just say, hey, we're going to try to grab as much of the market as we can. That was good.